Okay, okay. Your passion to tell this story it, it, it can't be denied here, and, and, and clearly it's a story that needs to be said. Um, how do you feel about the fact that there are a distinct lack of stories like this being told? Well, see, I mean, I mean, that's that's the whole point, Merv. I mean, it's kind of like, um, you know, uh, this story probably, you know, as geeks like us, you know, this probably, this story has probably been told like we've seen grown ups. Yeah, with Adam Sandler. Um, that's a very kind of like close cousin to this type of movie. Um, you seen like uh, when when I when I was expecting, you know, um, you know where it's about dads and how you know uh, they um, are ineffectual in a way, you know, to being a dad. You know, there's that kind of like um, talk and crisis, and it's a talking movie in that way. But here is like. You know, black men, because of where I grew up anyway in the 70s, I grew up in New York and everything, and it was kind of like they weren't around. So, you know, it's something that we weren't, like, used to seeing them gather that wasn't in some kind of, like, you know, drunken stupor uh, uh, state. So I just thought that this is important for them to be made, and hopefully that makes it a unique selling point. Really. Okay, that's, that's, that's really good. Um, because one of my big bugbears in this day and age is the fact that they are still movies that I just simply can't relate to. As a as a as a as a black adult male, I I, I don't know these characters. I don't know. I, I don't feel for them, or or they're not speaking to me or, or or my life experiences. So it is a pleasant surprise when a story does come along. You know, I mean, and the media will only pick up on certain ones, but there are stories out there that need to be told. You know. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, like the other unique uh, factor I would like to mention is is that, you know, because this is about like raising money and trying to get this film made, is is that um, um, it was brought up to me like when we did one of the subsequent drafts of making our characters black British, um, which gave it a unique selling point. So it wasn't like like black men from you know like the hood, but it was like black British, which on a world scale made it kind of unique. Because like we only see you know maybe one black Britain here and there peppered throughout various different movies, and a lot of times we see them, they're you know faking American accents, and um, I just thought that what would really be interesting is to show how diverse the black British uh, community is, and like to show that like that not just that they can act, but you know that um, it would be really great to see them all in one film. You know that's why two of the characters have like you know very strong African Nigerian style names because like uh, as the Black British Caribbean community is concerned, you know that's what you got. You don't have just a Black British person who you know now are uh, that got that Cockney accent like where we're doing like Don Cheadle, <coughs> but you know you have um, you know the the Black Nigerian or the Black Caribbean or you know that kind of character. I, I wrote this film a while ago. Uh, and, but I wanted to set it to during the Obama inauguration. And it chose that because, you know, when we found out, uh, and this is the first go around actually, but when we found out that Obama was okay, he was running, and then when he actually made it, I mean, you know, we're talking about, it was like the shot that went around the world. You know what I mean? It was like this whole big community mm -hmm. of people galvanized behind this one man. And like, it, I mean, you could imagine how it was in various different places. And it was it was a game changer. That's what I'm going to say. It was a game changer. Absolutely. Yeah. And so in that fashion, I feel this movie is a game changer. And to give that as kind of like an umbrella to the film of like uh, why it's important for them to step up mm -hmm. and be the kind of man that they want to be. That's why I wanted to set this at that time. But I will say what type of film I enjoy is uh, character-based films, films uh -huh. that make me think, films that uh -huh. make me feel, and that's what I'm hoping to do with this. I mean, like, as opposed to doing a genre film where I could play around with all the different tools or the effects, you know, I wanted to be able to do something that makes me feel, and this is an important subject. Uh -huh. I think you, you've hit the nail on the head there. If it, if it gets an audience to think, 
raises further questions. Mm. You know, I, I mean, it's the same with like my theatre work. I, I'm a big believer in, I don't know all the answers. If I knew the answers, I'd be a genius. But what I can do is I can raise questions. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. Anyway, listen, we're going to wrap this one up. Is there any last little things you want to say? I mean, basically, you know, I mean, like, uh, even though uh, what we're looking for is like, we're, we're trying to follow the trend of times, you know, how cameras are small now, they're down to the SD card. But, you know, it's no longer like, okay, we need to sell this to a studio, we need to get an agent, you know, we need to make this film on big cameras, you know. At this stage, you know, what we want to really do is make this film. So, um, crowdfunding and crowdsourcing is a new form of uh, getting your film made where if the public can believe just as much as I do that a film about black fatherhood needs to be made, then, I mean, hopefully, you know, you can follow us here on Kickstarter mm. and, uh, you know, and...